गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन होप यू आर ऑल फाइन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डेंटल कॉम्पोजिट्स एज यू नो दैट द कॉम्पोजिट्स इज अ रिसेंट इनोवेशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ डेंटिस्ट्री इट्स मोर प्रोमिसिंग दैन द डेंटल अमेलगम वाई इट्स मोर प्रोमिसिंग बिकॉज इट इज़ वाइट इन कलर इट्स एस्थेटिक एंड हैज अ लाइफ स्पैन एज अमेलगम वॉज इन द प्रीवियस ईयर्स टूडे वील डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ डेंटल कॉम्पोजिट्स and then we will discuss discuss about the classifications of dental composite as you know that for many years the amalgam was the filling material of choice although amalgam is the most used material in the clinics because it was easily available material it was cheap and has provided many years of outstanding clinical service what do you mean by outstanding clinical service because the people were thinking that amalgam has a long life span so that's why they were they are not preferring the composite at that time since there has been a trend in recent years toward tooth color restorations with dental composites so let's get started guys this lecture explains the most important developments in resin based dental composites and then we will see how the composite transformed in recent years and then we will understand the various comp components of the composition in order to apply the knowledge in various day to day clinical situations how and why these materials were improved and to be used as tooth color restorative materials we will discuss all these things today from the evolution of resin matrix and the clinical implications and the advancements in filler technology and focusing on the deficits for example the polymerization shrinkage moreover moreover classification systems and the difference between composite categories the types of the composites like the hybrid ones the nano hybrid ones the micro filled ones the packables and the flowable ones especially in view of their mechanical behavior how they perform in the clinics and we will analyze their overall properties what are composites the definition of the composite is just a multi phase material it means it is not a single phase material it has three different phases the one is the matrix phase the second one is the filler phase and then the joining thing is silane coupling agent combination of two materials with different physical and chemical properties when they come together to form a composite material such as calcium and phosphate minerals when they combined with organic components such as collagen enamel is is a hard but brittle and is supported by more resilient dentin it's also a composite so tooth is a composite because it consists of enamel and the dentin the ability to change properties of the macro scale object by controlling its individual components is a significant advantage in the use of composite materials so basically the composites are reinforced polymers in which the inorganic fillers such as silica alumina zirconia and some other materials are mixed with the organic polymer matrix so guys looking at this wall you can easily evaluate it's a composite basically let me give give me an opportunity to explain the very basic interaction between the matrix and the fillers in a composite system this very interaction is responsible for the physical properties we see on a macro scale so as explained previously the dental composites have two primary components the one is matrix phase and the second one is filler phase and we add lot of secondary components like polymerization initiators we add the pigments to give shape to the composites and the silane coupling agent that's very important thing because it joins your matrix and the filler phase now secondary components which are required for every composite material we shall see them in the future slides but the most important properties of the material is based upon the type of the filler 
and the type of the matrix phase. The matrix phase is called the organic phase due to origin of these resins and also called as a continuous phase. So guys the matrix phase we call it a continuous phase because of the molecules are in continuous contact with each other and holding inside the fillers that we dispersed in. This matrix phase is a highly viscous liquid that has the properties of adhesion while the glass particles in filler phase are mostly responsible for the physical, mechanical and optical properties. So the dental composites are the combination of filler and matrix. Okay, thank you Dr. Zahir for the basic introduction of the dental composites. So you guys must have understand what led to the development of the dental composites. Okay, let's start off with the history and background of these materials by looking at the efforts made during the evolution of tooth color desodorative materials, which will enable us to understand the physiochemical properties in a better way. So the first tooth color desodorative material was introduced was the silicate cements and uh, have been used for interior and posterior restorations and has some drawback in their physical properties that were weak. And the silicate cements needed to be placed in one moment cause increment placement was not an option. These cements were resulted from reactions of phosphoric acid with acid soluble glass particles to form a silica gel matrix and containing the residual glass particles. These cements were brittle, required mechanical retention and had an average longevity of few years. The solubility problem of silicate cements led to the introduction of unfilled acrylic systems based on polymethyl methacrylate. These materials could have been classified as composites because upon mixing the polymer powder form a dispersed phase and the monomer polymerized to form a continuous phase. The polymerization was initiated at a room temperature using the combination of benzoyl peroxide and the tertiary wines. Although these materials were initially aesthetic, but soon they were plagued with variety of problems such as poor color stability, high polymerization shrinkage, lack of bonding to the tooth structure and a large coefficient of thermal expansion. Methyl methacrylate monomer contracted excessively during polymerization permitting the marginal leakage and secondary caries. Also PMMA was not strong enough to support the crucial loads. So then the reinforcing ceramic fillers principally containing silica were added to the composition. These composites have improved the mechanical properties and good aesthetics but they did not bond to the tooth structure and still exhibit significant polymerization shrinkage caused by methyl methacrylate monomer and in addition there was no significant bonding between the silica particles and the polymer matrix. So previously the filler remained unbonded in matrix leading to the wear resistance as you can see in the picture as the particle easily dislodge from the matrix during function to solve this problem the saline coupling agent was then developed to keep the filler matrix and improving mechanical wear and the wear properties overall. The new improved formulation incorporated a coupling agent such as g meth acrylox propyl trimethoxysilane. I hope it's very difficult for you to understand in the first go or vinyl trihethoxysilane. This is a coupling agent. To make it simple, at one end it chemically bonds with the filler and on the other end it's chemically bonded with the resin matrix, hence providing a chemical bond. The chemical bond formed between the resin fillers and the resin matrix. The resulting composite have improved mechanical properties and wear resistance. However, the polymerization shrinkage and lack of bonding to tooth structure 
limited the clinical success of these formulation. So here comes the two bad properties. One is the polymerization shrinkage and the second one is lack of bonding. The major drawback of the shrinkage was due to myth acrylate monomer itself. A monofunctional monomer, the low molecular weight of myth acrylate monomer come together and forms a covalent bond during the curing process and the molecules further come together leading to the overall shrinkage. Addition of fillers though improved some of the physical aspects but shrinkage remain the major drawback yet. One way to address the polymerization shrinkage is to use a high molecular weight monomer rather than a low molecular weight with monofunctional properties in which the shrinkage is huge. As we know in the previous talk about the bonding, the acid etching method was already been introduced by Bonacore in the 1960s in the race to develop a perfect monomer, a di, tri or a polyfunctional monomer. In 1962, Bowen while at the National Bureau of Standards synthesized an acrylated epoxy using glycidyl meth acrylate and bisphenol A. This was an epoxy resin for use as a matrix for dental composites. The resulting monomer called BisGMA or Bowen's resin possessed the viscosity of a honey on a cold day. He was also pioneered for the first generation of bonding agent containing N-phenyl glycidyl, glycidyl meth acrylate which we already discussed in the previous section of adhesion. This GMA or Bowman resin possesses the viscosity of honey and therefore there is a limit of the amount of filler particles that can be added without affecting its handling properties. As it can be illustrated in this slide, as the larger molecules of matrix are not allowing more fillers to be packed, the stronger van der Waal interaction among the base GMA molecules creating a virtual gaps. So there becomes a need to decrease the viscosity of the monomer so that more fillers can be added to the matrix via low molecular weight monomers. So research, so research then started for a low molecular weight monomer to minimize the viscosity and to increase the filler load. Okay, everyone, after a very good discussion on fillers and matrices, let's move on towards the individual components of composition of these dental composites. Uh, we have learned by definition a resin composite contains four structural components. Its structure is made up of basically four fundamental units and these are uh, the polymer matrix which holds the filler particles and these filler particles are interacting with the polymer matrix with the help of a coupling agent which is a silane coupling agent and an initiator is required to initiate the polymerization so uh, these are the basic components of a composite system so how they are embedded in you can uh, visualize in this animation some other additives are also subjected to the type of composite is being used uh, such as uh, dual cure needs an inhibitor as well why because uh, uh, self-curing over time during the shelf life can be prevented okay so during the storage it must not cure okay so the inhibitors are also used in some dual cure composites so 
uh, other modifiers such as uh, tints and uh, some optical modifiers are added in uh, a special kind of restorative material uh, to mimic uh, the optical properties of uh, the enamel or dentine okay so, so some composites are more opaque some composites are more translucent so these are some of the additives which uh, are available in uh, multi opacity composite systems so uh, having said that since you have already learned uh, what is the matrix phase and uh, to which it is uh, the other ingredients are being added so most resin composite matrices are based on bis gma or bisphenol a clacidyl methacrylate resin as discussed earlier, a very high molecular weight monomer, which prevents excessive filler load. Why? Because uh, there is an interaction between, between each molecule and they are interacting with Van der Waal forces. And virtually there is no space in between uh, to add any other more filler. So some composites are using UDMA or urethane dimethacrylate instead of bis GMA uh, is used to increase the filler load. So because of the low molecular weight is allowing uh, to add more fillers while many other manufacturers are now using uh, a combination of these two. Uh, because of large uh, molecular volume of these monomers uh, polymerization shrinkage can be as low as 0.9 percent uh, some manufacturers have added a portion of uh, TEG DMA or triethylene glycol dimethacrylate it's a low viscosity resin and it is used as a diluent such as using in flowable composites we shall discuss it later Formulation of material that uses bis EMA or bisphenol A, polyethylene glycol, diether dimethacrylate or oxy bis methacrylate monomers that will cyclopolymerize the chain like molecules. And these chain like molecules uh, are very interesting that upon curing, the chain is opened into more linear way and uh, cross-linking with the adjacent chain. So what it is doing, it is influencing the overall handling, handling properties as well as uh, holds a promise to reduce overall volumetric shrinkage. Uh, two additional proper, uh, proprietary monomers have been introduced uh, in bulk well one by 3m corporation uh, let's see the details in their animation uh, the addition fragmentation monomer uh, is a low molecular weight to reduce the viscosity and enhancing filler loading what it does it breaks the bond during curing under shrinkage load and recreates to minimize the shrinkage stress from inside of the matrix. Uh, the uh, addition fragmentation monomer, the other is aromatic urethane dimethacrylate. It is a very high molecular weight monomer. Its molecular weight is higher than bis GMA, which is also helping in reducing the overall volumetric shrinkage. So, from the filler's perspective, these particles are usually a type of glass, such as barium or borosilicate glass, uh, zirconium, aluminum oxide, silicon oxide are added to the matrix. Uh, the greater the percentage of fillers by volume or by weight, the better the physical properties of a composite. However, filler loading has an upper limit after which the material becomes too viscous for a clinical use 
uh, the types of fillers will be discussed during the classification section so the fillers are added to improve its physical properties and the list explains the effects of fillers on the composite system uh, the fillers are reducing the coefficient of thermal expansion so there is no change during uh, the change in temperature in the oil cavity what it is also doing the addition of fillers is also reducing the polymerization shrinkage of the composite and making the material more harder denser and more resistant to wear uh, the filler improves translucency to mimic the natural enamel optical properties again the greater the percentage of filler added by volume or by weight the better the physical properties of a composite system as previously discussed uh, the filler particles are inorganic and cannot be bonded to the matrix phase therefore filler particles are coated with silane the vinyl triethoxy silane uh, it is essential that filler particles be bonded to the matrix otherwise they will dislodge from the matrix so this allows the more flexible polymer matrix to transfer the stresses to these filler particles and this chemical bond between the two phases of the composite is formed by this coupling agent which is a fundamental uh, unit of the constituent of the composite system so uh, according to the activators and initiators uh, we see a chemically activated composite or a light activated composite so uh, these agents activate the polymerization of composites so initiator varies with the type of composite whether it is a light cure or it's a chemically cured the chemically cured resin uh, or the chemically cured composites are supplied as two paste systems one of which contains the benzoyl peroxide initiator uh, which initiates the polymerization reaction by activating uh, the aromatic tertiary amines by releasing the free radicals uh, the light curable dental composites are supplied as a single paste system contained in a light proof syringe exposure to the light in the blue region a wavelength of about 468 nanometers produces an excited state of the photoactivator uh, remember we are using an sep a separate initiator in that which is a benzoyl peroxide but in photoactivated composites we are using a photoactivator which is activated at particular wavelength of the light which is 468 and at this wavelength the photo activator uh, releases the free radicals and initiates the addition polymerization and the most common photo initiator is used as camphorquinone although there are some others we will see in the future slides uh, there has been a number of classification systems proposed to describe composite restorative materials. One of the most often used classification system is based upon filler particle size. Uh, as composite restoratives have evolved, the size of the filler particles and their size distribution have been changed in an attempt to achieve the best possible mechanical properties while maintaining these statics because this is why uh, these materials were developed composites generally are classified with respect to the components amounts and properties of their fillers or matrices phase or by their handling properties the most common classification method is based on the filler content by weight or by volume percent uh, filler particle size and the method of filler addition composites 
are also could be defined on the basis of the matrix composition. Uh, is it contain a BIS-GMA or a UDMA? Or we can describe by polymerization method. Is it a self-curing composite, a UV light curing composite? Is it a visible light curing composite? Or is it a dual curing composite? Okay. Uh, almost all the important properties of composites are improved by using higher filler levels and we have already discussed that the only practical problem is that as uh, the filler level is increased we saw that the fluidity of the material is decreased and it's uh, not good for our clinical use so highly filled compositions typically contain large filler particles but this composition results in a rough finish surface smaller filler particles are used to guarantee that composites have a relatively smooth surface finish so uh, the filler particle sizes for the earliest composites average 10 to 20 microns in diameter with many of the larger particles 50 microns or more they were mega 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 filled because it was not considered necessary to designate the particle size range or ranges of the composites because back then all commercial products were in approximately the same category so because of the early filler particles were relatively gigantic large the composites based on those large fillers uh, became known as macrofills so the composite filler particles are considered macro fillers if the range is between 10 to 100 microns they will be considered as midi fillers if the range is between 1 to 10 microns uh, they could be called as mini fillers if the range is between 0.1 to 1 micron the micro fillers contain the particle size of 0.01 to 0.1 microns on the nano scale which are the true nano scale the particle size ranges from 0.001 to 0.01 microns uh, then the composites with mixed ranges of particles were also introduced or mixed particle sizes they were called hybrids such as if you mix the midis and the mac micros uh, the combined material will be called as midi micro hybrid as so as micro and nan nano hybrids are made like in the same way uh, classified these composites are classified on the basis of size amount and the composition of inorganic fillers uh, these are the conventional or macrofill microfill hybrids is it a nanofill is it a packable composites or a flowable let's see them individually so uh, average particle size of these conventional uh, composites uh, uh, these macrofill composites is from uh, 5 to 25 microns the filler content is approximately 75 to 80 percent by weight and exhibited a rough surface texture because of uh, the relatively large size of these fillers and extreme hardness of these particles the surface becomes more rough as the resin matrix becomes less hard over time wears at faster rate due to the roughness and becomes discolored and have some wear patterns on the occlusal contact areas and it increases because of this roughness so the plaque can be accumulated and the discoloration is quite uh, quick in these kind of composites microfill composites were introduced in early 1980s average particle size of microfill composites ranges from 0.04 to 0.01 micrometer the filler content of microfill resins is 35 to 60 percent by weight and the small particle size results in 
smooth polished surface which is resistant to plaque debris and stain formation uh, but because of the less filler content some of their physical properties are inferior such as uh, um, they, although they have very high polishability excellent translucency but the exhibit low fracture toughness and increased marginal breakdown and they are indicated for the restoration of anterior teeth as the enamel layer replacement or sometimes in the cer cervical affriction lesions only so the hybrid resin composites are combination of conventional and microfill technology and can be used in situations like class threes and four restorations hybrid resin composites contain a blend of uh, 0 0.04 micron and small particles uh, ranging from 1 to 4 micron size of the fillers. The combination of medium and small fillers allow the highest level of filler loading among resin composites and a relative improvement in physical properties. They can be polished but not as lustrous uh, as microfill composites the high fill content also improving resistance to internal discoloration uh, in the nano filled particles scale all the particles are of true nano size okay and they are in nanometer range there are several purposes for incorporating nanofillers in dental composites first the size of nanomeric particles is below the visible light it is below the visible light and our visible light is falling in the wavelength between 400 to 800 millimeters so when these particles size are so small smaller than the visible light uh, it providing the opportunity to create a highly translucent material okay so this is the advantage of the nanofillers we discussed about the packable composites and or the condensable composites uh, they were developed by adjusting their filler distribution and to increase the strength and stiffness of the uncured material and provide a consistency and handling characteristics uh, similar to those of a lathcut amalgam okay so you feel uh, like that you are filling an amalgam specifically the packable condensable characteristics are derived from the inclusion of certain special kind of uh, fillers these are elongated fibrous fillers uh, the size ranging around 100 microns in length uh, rough textured surface the branched geometries that tend to interlock the resistance to flow and this causes the uncured resin to be stiff and resistant to slump but at the same time the consistency is moldable under the force of amalgam condenser rough surfaces and blends of fibrous and other filler particles produce a packable consistency and enable other properties to be optimized for clinical performance uh, the flowable composites are the modification of the small particle composite and hybrid composite result is the so-called flowable composites they have lower viscosity uh, through a reduced filler loading uh, which enables the resin to flow readily in and adopting the internal walls spreading uniformly uh, to the cavity forms and can be used as a liner or base under stronger composites especially in class 2 posterior preparations and other situations in which access is difficult however uh, whereas the materials are inherently inferior in mechanical properties due to lower filler loading and higher wear 
and other forms of attrition because of their greater ease of adaptation and flexibility as a cured material flowable composites are also useful in class 2 restorations only in the gingival areas uh, they may be used as fish sealants and minimal class 1 restorations without any load uh, to prevent caries um, because of they can flow into small cavities and defects along restoration margins they can be used as a composite repair material uh, since we already discussed that uh, the classification on the basis of uh, the matrix composition uh, like bis gma udma or bis ema TEGDMA or is a combination of PISGM and UDMA or the more modern type of material addition fragmentation monomer and aromatic urethane dimethacrylates which were, have been developed uh, <coughs> the classification according to the curing method uh, which uses uh, self curing uh, two paste system or uh, curing by light curing by ultraviolet or curing by visible light or uh, some materials can be dual cure uh, if you don't cure with the light they have the tendency of self curing but if you give the light source to excite the photo initiator in the same dual cure system uh, the setting reaction is fast um, Chemically activated resins, as discussed previously, uh, are supplied as two pastes, one of which contains a benzoyl peroxide initiator and the other uh, the tertiary amine activator. Uh, when these two pastes are mixed together, the amine reacts with the peroxides to form a free radical and addition polymerization begins. One problem with this method is that during mixing, it is almost impossible to avoid incorporating air into the mix, thereby forming pores that weakens the structure and also trapping oxygen inside, which inhibits the polymerization during curing. Another problem is that the operator has no control over the working time after the two components have been mixed together. So uh, to overcome the problems of chemical activation, uh, manufacturers have developed resins that uh, do not require mixing uh, by using photosensitive initiator systems and a light source for activation. The first light activated system were formulated for ultraviolet light to initiate free radicals. Uh, this spectrum is far more energetic than visible light as well as harmful. Today, ultraviolet light cured composites have been replaced by visible blue light activated system uh, with greatly improve the depth of cure, uh, a curable working time and minimal porosity. Light curable dental composites are supplied as a single paste contained in a light proof syringe. The free radical initiating system uh, consisting of photosensitizer and an amine initiator. It contains in the same paste. Uh, as long as the two components are not exposed to the light, they do not interact. But exposure to light in the blue region, a wavelength of about uh, 400 to 490 nanometers, or specifically 468 nanometer, excites uh, the free radical from the camphorquino, which then interacts with the amines to form free even more free radicals that initiate addition polymerization. Uh, camphorquinone is the most commonly used photosensitizer that absorbs blue light uh, with wavelength between 400 to 500 nanometers. Some manufacturers have patented and used some 
uh, of their own proprietary photo initiators such as Lucerin and Ivocerin. You can search on internet uh, or you can visit these uh, manufacturers website. Uh, this particular initiator is developed by Ivoclar. Uh, it improves the light sensitivity and also improving the depth of penetration. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, on our next session, we will be discussing about the polymerization shrinkage stress, the configuration factor in detail and how to place the composites and then we will be discussing uh, the other aesthetic parts of uh, this series thank you so much for your time